the um, can we centralize the computer more and get him in here? Uh, just a little bit, if anything. Like, All right, we're gonna get some guest commentary in here real quick. Uh, let's see. I don't know if it'll work. Yeah, we'll, here we'll just do it this way. Here, pop in here. Let's get this nonsense out of the way. All right, anyways, got uh, Zach over here starting with Dragon Ravine, discarding lots of cards, getting lots of pluses. Just go ahead and pop that on, my friend. And let's see, let's just maybe turn. Ah, you got cables coming out of it. Okay. That should be good. Can you see that? Yeah. This one's delayed, so look at this one. So. In the early rounds, so I decided to play the Goat Control event, and now I'm here. Fair enough. How did you do in the Goat Control event? I did fairly well. I ended up playing my friend, though, so there was my loss. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, nothing wrong with that. Uh, was it fun being able to play a competitive Goat format yeah, uh, absolutely. event? Absolutely. It felt like the old days again. It felt like I was playing for something instead of just Goat Controlling for fun. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, good, good to hear. We're going to see if we can do more of those events here in the future. Uh, I'm pulling out their lists real quick. Just got to grab Zach's. Man, I, I, I've mentioned this so many times before on the stream. I love it whenever I pull out the Leverett's lists because they're in, like, perfect grade school cursive, and it's just the best thing ever. See, like, I like look at that. Look at that. <laughs> wow. It makes it nice and easy to read. But it's just, it's, it's so great. Anyways... Yeah, Zach's just kind of vomiting on the field right now. <laughs> yeah, he's going for the uh, double Draco sack combo. Yeah, uh, which was made popular by, uh, or at least made known, I should say, by Billy. Yeah. It's probably been toyed around with and known before then, but Billy at uh, San Mateo uh, and even a little bit at Fort Worth really kind of brought that out. And this is what makes Dragon Rulers in its pure form better than Dragoonity Rulers, in my opinion. Absolutely. Uh, Pat has always said, or not has always, but I had a talk with him recently where uh, he talked that, you know, why he switched from Dragoonities to Dragons is at the beginning of the format, Dragoonity were better because they had the better turn one play. Mm -hmm. Whereas now Dragons, with the addition of Trigon or Kidmoto Dragon, whichever you're running in your build, uh, they obviously have the better turn one play. Um, now, uh, speaking of formats, what's your what is your opinion on the on this new ban list that we have that goes in effect on January first? I think it's a good change for the game. It's uh, at least attempting to take us away from dragon rulers. I'm not sure how effective that'll be, but uh, we'll see how that turns out. Hopefully, right. it'll be some diversity in the game. It'll Absolutely. be a little bit more than just you know spit on the field and hope to win. Absolutely. Now. Uh, you say uh, hope to take Dragon Rulers out of the game. With the Dragon Rulers going down to four, Dragon Ravine getting banned, Seven Sword at one. Uh, I keep hearing people talking about Dragon Rulers are still a deck, Dragon Rulers are still a deck, Dragon Rulers are still a deck. What is it that makes Dragon Rulers still a deck after that point? Uh, just the recursive play. There's, the, the monsters never die unless you choose to let them die. I got you. Or some degenerate trap takes them out. Um, mm -hmm. As long as you have dragons in your grave, which can be by means of anything, like Blue Eyes Engine or Dragoonities or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. As long as you have dragons in the grave, they're, they're constant huge boss monsters that are going to come out every turn. Fair enough. Uh, now, is there a particular engine that you can think of that is going to be best for them going into the next format? Well, I've heard uh, some stuff about the Blue Eyes Engine. I've heard some stuff about Mythics. Um, I'll just, we'll just have to wait and see because there's a lot of other decks that will be able to possibly outpace them depending on which way they go with it. Mm -hmm, absolutely, because the big beaters are all the you know the only answer. There are a lot of decks that have answers to the big beaters. Right. Thankfully, though, we won't have the degeneracy of six cents in return mm -hmm. left in the format. My though. goodness, that's gonna. Pro I think that's the most exciting thing about going into the next format is that those are just gone outright. I actually, uh, for the past few events i haven't played six cents or return in a game two or three because mm -hmm. i side them out with every one of my dragon mirror match opponents very nice very nice so and that's that's one of the, my uh, that's one of my favorite things that i've seen uh from the tail end of this format specifically that i've seen at the arg you know, circuit series events uh is you know having that gentleman's game where you're siding them out in games two uh games mm -hmm. two and three uh have you ever had the opponent that's like oh i'm going to put it back in uh and done that or have you mostly gotten uh pretty good opponents that are just like, yeah, we'll keep it out. Well, I've had some people that didn't play six cents, so mm -hmm. I left mine in. Uh, some people tried to put the return back in, like, on the slide. Some people actually tried to, you know, uh -huh. just 
muzzle their way back into it, with it and then I'd ask for it to be face up and then they'd pull it back out of their day. Yeah, and they're like, oh, you got it. That was an accident. Yeah, sure it was. Mm -hmm. I'm not seeing too many ways for Mr. Winters to play out of the situation. Yeah, he's definitely in a very tough position, that's for sure. Uh, breaking that first or that first turn Draco double Draco lock is pretty pretty difficult uh, so we'll see what he actually makes uh, happen here he's been able to turbo through a little bit of his deck thanks to cards of consonants here and a dragon ravine but let's see what actual plays he can make here looks like he's a vanishing blaster to get a guard yeah so a synchro play is going to be happening. What synchro or do you think we're going to see here? Uh, do you think it's just going to be a Stardust, uh, like the, the, the Spark Dragon, or do you think we're going to see something like Scrap Dragon try and get rid of some tokens? I assume he's trying to Scrap Dragon. I don't see too many other options. Mm -hmm. At least Scrap Dragon gets rid of one of the Draco sacks because um, he can't blader, obviously. Absolutely. Well, at this point, he could he could do the blader and then just run it o run over the one Draco. Oh well, he, no, he, he can't battle. That's what I'm. Oh yeah, I'm dumb. <laughs> Looks like he went with Scrap Dragon to destroy his own ravine. Mm -hmm. Yep, to destroy one of the Dracos. So, lock mm -hmm. pseudo broken. Let's see if he's got Something. things to set. He's got at least a Phoenix Wing to set. set. Another set. ravine. I would imagine. I don't yeah. believe he'd want to get rid of it that early. Yeah. So I believe it's a Mirror Force and a, well, I say that, but he doesn't run Mirror Force in the main. <laughs> uh, so it's a Phoenix Wing and one other trap card that I didn't quite get to see. May have been a trap stun. Mm, Phoenix Wing. So Draco Lock officially broken. <laughs> but it did take a lot of card advantage from Jordan to be able I, to do I so. I don't believe he, yeah, I still don't believe he has the. Uh, so well, I could help. One thing I've noticed from Zachary Leverett's playing is that he has tails when he has a bad hand. He's not he's not showing any of his tails right now. So yeah, absolutely. I'm assuming his hand is consistent of possibly Max C or something. He seems confident the way he's playing. Absolutely, he's not. There's no shaking involved, anything like that. And again, he's also had three feature. This is his third feature match today, so he may just be uh, used to everything, and it's just like uh, let's just get this over with. So. Like he's banishing for a redox. Banishing blaster to get it. So let's see what nonsense can come of this. Assuming third Draco sack? Well he uh, Phoenix winged the Draco sack. Did so. he? Oh. Or he Phoenix winged the last Draco, so yeah. We're just gonna see tokens come out and get rid of that scrap dragon. I mean, Jordan just doesn't have very many dragons right now. I mean, he's got the scrap dragon and the guard and the redox, so he can make he can recur the redox. Yeah, he's low on colors. Oh, he does have another. Oh, there it is. He has the yeah. second ravine. He had the ravine, so he can load up on his colors. He'll just be short one now, because uh, he does run all four. Uh, one and only Marcus, he cracked the Draco board by summoning Redox and Flambeau Guard, ramming the two tokens, overlaying into Scrap Dragon and destroying his ravine in to destroy one of the Draco and set Phoenix Wing to use in the next turn. So that's how he got over that. Looks like he's going to get the Blader playoff with the Blaster. Good mm -hmm. job. So Zach locked out a... Uh, Special summoning here for a turn, or summoning here for a turn, really. Uh, lost 200 life points in that. Still very much ahead in life points. This is where I like to watch the person that's been put under the Crimson Blade of in this case, Zachary. Um, the way they play their next turn is very telling of what they have in their hand. Absolutely. And that was just, well, I'm not going to do anything. So... Right, looking at Zach, he does run, a one, he does run uh, one copy of Battle Fader. Uh, as well as the three maxis, so that we haven't seen one of the maxis yet, kind of surprises me. But Let's see what happens. Car 
Max Confidence. Get some more cards. Just dig a little bit deeper in the deck. I think there's issues with cards of continent because I don't I don't feel like getting rid of your tuner in the mirror match is the most optimal play, even if it does dig you two cards deeper. I feel like the tuners are important. Mm -hmm. And um judging by his deck list, he only well, he plays plenty of tuners. He plays a couple of Corsescas, a Brandy Stock and a guard as well. Yeah, as so he, he made up for running the cards continences, but he's still you know, still getting rid of those tuners. Uh, I actually agree with you. I think that uh, your tuners are just, they're so important, and especially, there's no way to recur them. Right, especially seeing as he doesn't play Debris Dragon, so he can't even, he can't get his guard back. Or mm -hmm. Hmm. He does, uh, interesting uh, tech is he does play two card card D in the main. I noticed that. I was So it is it is a neat uh, redox uh, target, being able to banish for redox. Uh, uh, but that gives him so much things to banish with redox. Redox, I guess, is the star of his deck since he runs three max C and two card card D as well as the ones to a Scarecrow. So he's got plenty of things to banish to keep bringing back Redox for that defense. Uh, Zach obviously taking a huge hit there, coming down all the way to 4,200 life points. Let's see what he can actually do here. Six cents. Here comes the degeneracy. Five. Oh, he did not call. I believe he called three and four, which I believe is the right play. Mm -hmm. He wasn't in a very losing position, and even if he was, I believe. Mm -hmm. Made the right decision. Absolutely. Yeah, at that point, at that point, I imagine that calling five and six was probably the better idea, or calling three and four was the better idea, just so if you did roll a five, which did happen, you had a better chance of getting the colors in the grave, but you just build a card card D and four spells and traps, so. Yeah, the newer, um, the newer dragon builds are lower on monster counts than they used to be. Um, so six cents sometimes is a, more of a burden than it is a blessing. Yeah. But, dang, whenever you get that to go off and get that plus five on the draw, it's just like, okay, well, yeah, I, just, it's, it's, I just win. It's still an absolutely <laughs> ridiculous card. Mm -hmm. No doubt about that. Yeah. It just, it just it, simple fact, it just should never have been made legal here in the TCG land. I agree. I can agree with that wholeheartedly. It's good to see it go, actually, as well as return. Yeah, absolutely. It's great to see those go. Uh, other, other interesting card that I was uh, happy to see go, uh, self-destruct button going to one mm -hmm. and final countdown going to one. Or did self-destruct get banned? I don't remember. Self-destruct self was, was, banned. was banned. And final countdown going to one, you know, those little degenerate decks uh, taking another little hit, small things at a time. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually saw a final countdown player today. Yeah, I, I did see the final countdown there. Uh, he didn't obviously hasn't done too well, or we would have uh, heard about him up here at the tables. But it was interesting to see it actually here. There's a big guy. He does have a battle fader and a scarecrow in hand, or not a scarecrow, the Phoenix Wing Wind Blast in hand. So. so he's done. Uh, Jordan's done so much. But yet he still only has the one dragon in the grave. <laughs> he has the blaster. I have to wonder why Zachary made a big eye as opposed to a colossal fighter. I'm not. Sh I didn't watch. I'm not sure if he didn't have the colors to get the tuner, or he didn't mm -hmm. give them up, or what I the case may have been. But it seemed like colossal would have been a better play. Colossal probably would have been better there, because then he would have either have the crimson blader on his side, or have the 2900 colossal fighter out. Correct. So. Jordan's got plenty of earth targets to go with his uh, redox that he has in hand, so he's going to have some kind of defense, but he has to get rid of the big eye or he's going to lose his defense right away. Mm. It's a wonder he didn't play the popular card of the weekend, which is Fossil Dine in the main deck. Uh, yeah. I've noticed a lot of people playing that. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> but unfortunately, then you run into the people like uh, Dayton, uh, who in his dragons... He let Fossil Dyna take him down to 1,200 or down to 2,400 life point or 3,400 life points. Uh, played double reckless, double hope for escape, and drew like 12 cards in a turn and wow. just and dropped Mon Dark Hole, Montage Dragon, traps done. It was it was ridiculous. His match against Kevin Silva was uh, pretty unheard of. Looks like he's taking a while to decide. I don't think he's in a. He's, he's not in he's not in an optimal position at all. 
Uh, he's ahead in life points, but it's going to start showing that he's just he, it, he's not very ahead at all. And this is where Cards of Continents causes the problem, because I believe that him adding the tuner and using it to draw more cards was less resourceful than him getting more colors to the graveyard. Mm -hmm. So Dragon Ravine going to send the Redox. Even though he, yeah, he does still have the Ravine. And then Zach just waiting for the right time to activate this Phoenix Wing Wind Blast. So now he's got three colors in the grave. Uh, really only enough targets to bring out one dragon and, or one other dragon, namely Blaster and the, uh, and the Redox. Like brings out that blaster, vanishes mm -hmm. Thailand. I didn't see the other one, but I'm assuming it was nothing since he didn't search. Yeah. So yeah. now he wing blast. Yep. So there's the wing blast, uh, knocking it out of there. So no uh, damage for the turn. No damage going to be dealt to Zachary. But was he declaring an attack? He declared he an attack with okay. the blaster. He tried to run over the big eye. So now he has forced the phoenix wing out. But he's still the most I think he can do is just summon the Redox, unless he's got a Tempest in hand that I didn't see. Zachary Levitt playing the Dragon Shrine that he and his fellow Atlanteans are playing. Mm -hmm. It is an interesting card. I, uh, I've been running, a, I don't know if you saw the article that I wrote on the Chaos Dragon deck that I had built where I was running that. Uh, but it's a, it's a very, uh, being able to run extra copies of Foolish Burial on your mm -hmm. deck is never a bad thing, uh, especially when you cannot get to Ravine for whatever reason. Right. So it's just, it's an extra Ravine because if you really need it, you can send, uh, he can send the blue eyes and everything. Looks like Jordan just scooping it up. All right. That gives Zach game one here. Uh, with Jordan not uh, able to really do anything. <laughs> All right, now as we're... Uh, as they're going into the side deck, uh, let's take a quick commercial break here real quick before we dive into looking at their side decks and what's going to come in, what's going to come out, things like that. Uh, and we'll be right back with that. Thanks for saying bye, guys. Ooh, Zachary scooped? Zachary scooped? Ooh. That's why I can yeah, that's interesting. I didn't think Zachary would be the one scooped. Yeah. Why did Zach scoop? Apparently he didn't have a play because he had the he had two drag, two colors and everything, so. Mm. Interesting. So Zachary was the one who actually scooped there. So, oh well. Yeah, that interesting for sure. So let's just take a look at these side decks. What's going to happen here? So, Zach obviously playing the Fossil Dino. May see that come in. Uh, I'd, I'd imagine we'd see that come in. Um, Looking like he sides his six cents instead of main. Yeah, that's probably for uh, what Patrick's talked about in the past, where you side the six cents, you reveal it to them, say, hey, let's take out six cents in return, mm -hmm. and then you just keep it in the side and you don't put it in the main. Yeah, so that's what Patrick would do, was doing at uh, Worcester, or Worcester, however you want to say it. Uh, and it worked pretty, pretty well for him. Mm -hmm. Let's see, so. Looks like he's going to probably put in, uh, Zachary Lev is probably going to put in Wabaku here, I would imagine, and Fossil Dina. Yeah, Wabaku, Fossil Dina. Uh, Let's see here. It's playing the mirror match, so I don't see much reason to bring in the the Dragonity, Achilles, and Legionnaire. Typhoons, maybe. Uh, I could see Typhoon. Yeah, Typhoons, because uh, Jordan is playing a decent amount of trap cards here, as well as having you know being able to win the field spell war. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, Jordan is playing. Let's see, he has the third MST in the side. Uh, he does not play uh, Dina. He does play. Two mirror force on the side, fiendish chains, transmigration, rivalry, DNA surgery, skill drains, 
Snipe Hunters, because he's on cores and DD Crows. Looks like his deck, his list is built more for siding against the rogue decks like mm -hmm. Evil Swarm and Constellar, more so than it is for siding against the mirror. Uh, maybe see the mirror forces, the DD Crow, and the third MST come in, but anything else that you think might go in at all? <laughs> not necessarily. Um, probably the Transmigration Prophecy, but he's going second, so I'm not sure if he wants to. I wouldn't, want to, I wouldn't want to draw that when I'm trying to draw max C's in my first hand. So. It's probably just going to be the Crow, possibly the Typhoon, mm -hmm. maybe the Mirror Force. It'll right. be interesting to see what they put in, but it looks like we are going to go ahead and get started with a uh, special Redux and, flip and Summon Fossil Diana Go. So let's hope that... Or, uh, uh, for Jordan's sake, let's hope he opened a blaster to ditch for the Fossil Dyna. Doesn't look like it. Looks like he's going to just set the 2K Defender. Mm -hmm. And it does. Oh, yeah, he has the guard, so the guard is the 2K Defender for him. So. Oh, so we have a trap stun down and one other card for Jordan. So couldn't quite see what the other one was. Uh... So we'll obviously find out pretty soon if it's an offensive card like Phoenix Wing or Compulsory or anything like that. So and there's the guard. So 800 to Zachary for attacking straight into that just you know big wall of a butt there. And that's one of the few problems that comes with Fossil Dyna is if, if they have the uh, the ability to sword uh, or gold sark for some people a tempest or a blaster and get the 2k defender and just set it they can hold on until they find the answer to the fossil dyna absolutely so i mean obviously you can ob you can have the answer to the 2k defender as well by having you know your offensive traps but then that leaves you with less to defend your fossil dyna right yeah it forces you to forces you to get over it a tuner Fairly straightforward, simple plays here, you know, uh, sorting blaster for blaster. That is a return from the different dimension that he has set, so mm -hmm. they did not decide to do it in the out. game. Wow. Well, when it is round seven, uh, and, you know, you, you have to win if you're undefeated. Or if you're undefeated, you could lose this and then win the next one. Mm -hmm. But if you're X1 at this point, you have to win this. So you right. can do the intentional draw in the last round to assure that you're going to get in. Otherwise, you have to win... If you lose this one and you and you go X2, it's like one, maybe two will end up, end up in the top 16. Maybe have a few more since we only had 160 people today. Right. But we'll see how that actually pans out. I believe that siding out return is less about, you know, wanting yourself to win with the return more so than not wanting them to sack you with theirs. Exactly. Because I feel a bit safer. You know, Myself. I, absolutely. I'm the same way. Uh, while I haven't been playing, dr I haven't personally played dragons. That definitely seems uh, <laughs> it, th there's credence to that entirely. It's that's what I've always told people whenever they ask, why do they do that? You, you could sack with return for game. I'm like, or they could sack you with return for game. Right. So you play a lot differently when you know that they can't return you for game. Mm -hmm. I say I use my trap stun a bit more, uh, trap stun or decree or whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. a bit more aggressively when I know that there isn't a return or a sixth sense sitting face down because I don't have to worry about them chaining on top of my trap stuns or having to save it for the return of the sixth sense. Amen to that. Looks like he's blaster pop the tuner. So it's Jordan's starting to get away. some poking in. <laughs> We're going to blaster pop the, fe the f uh, fossil dyna. I believe that's why he summoned the redox so that it would bounce back to his hand so that he could redox a fake, possibly redox a fake back. Yeah. Which is a smart play, for sure. Actually, does uh, Zach even have a hand right now? I'm almost certain that he does not. So, so the... He's kind of 
ravined everything to the grave. Yep. It's so, like he's playing very methodically, not really thinking about mm -hmm. his future plays. He's just going ahead and loading the graveyard up so that when he, when Jordan does get rid of the fossil dino, which he just did, he would have plays. Exactly. So he's got plays, lots of plays to actually do once he actually gets back to his turn. That's just hoping that, you know, Jordan doesn't just straight up OTK him right here because the Phoenix Wings are dead because he has no cards in his hand. Uh, he does, let's see, Wabaku could be a thing that he has down right now. Uh, his return could be something. A torrential at some point. Uh, warning compulsory. So there are cards that he has that can be, you know, his you know, salvation at this point, but they're about to go away. Looks like he's going to go ahead and go for it if he's got it. And that looks like the game. And Zachary Leverett losing out to Jordan Winners in the Dragon Ruler Mirror Match. Uh, very straightforward. Uh, return. Technically, it was a return for game, but well played on Jordan.